Well, it's finally time for me to talk about Primal. First though, a confession, I didn't finish it. For reasons that I will go into in the gameplay section, I simply didn't feel compelled to continue, and there are so many other great games in my backlog that I really didn't feel like forcing myself to play through a game I wasn't enjoying very much. I don't normally write a review until I've got to the end of a game, but I am making an exception in this case. None of this means that Primal is a bad game, it just didn't click with me. The game begins with Jen attending a rock concert with her boyfriend Lewis. They are attacked in a dark alley behind the gig by a hulking creature, which turns out to be Belhazur, a demon under the command of Abaddon, the embodiment of chaos. As a result of the attack, both Jen and Lewis are rendered unconscious. A gargoyle named Scree then visits Jen in hospital and asks for her help, restoring the balance of order and chaos in the realm of oblivion. Jen leaves her physical form behind in our realm, known as Mortalis to those from Oblivion, and then travels to four different realms to solve the problems of the creatures that live in each one, and stop Abaddon's schemes. It is left unclear whether this is all a dream, or if it actually happens. The characters of Primal are probably its strongest aspect, in particular the Gargoyle Scree, who is your constant companion throughout the adventure. He is very well written, and you will come to like him a lot. He also plays a significant role in the gameplay, as you can switch to him at almost any time, though he is completely useless in combat. I didn't find Jen to be a particularly amazing main character, though she does improve as the game goes on. There are quite a few other characters scattered throughout the game as well, such as the main force of evil, Abaddon, and his counterpart, Arella. There are also various different residents of the realms that you visit. They typically pop up a short way into each realm, present you with a problem that needs solving, and then disappear until you come up with a solution. Primal is technically very impressive and is capable of running in pro progressive scan mode at a resolution of 576i. Together with the art design, this makes for a very pretty game for the most part, though some realms look better than others. The realm of Aether in particular features a lot of very drab greys and browns, making it the least enjoyable part of the game and also where I happen to stop playing. Other areas like Aquis can be very pretty though, and all of Jen's transformations look pretty cool. The voice acting for Scree is very well done indeed, which is perhaps no surprise seeing as it is performed by none other than Andreas Katsoulis, who played Jakar in Babylon 5. Jen's voice acting is okay for the most part, but can be rather annoying on occasion. The symphonic music is rather nice, but can get lost in the background, and there is some decent metal when you get into a fight. As well as this, there are a handful of other metal tunes performed by a band called 16 Volt, who I can't say that I'd ever heard of before this game though that means very little really. Their music is perfectly serviceable, but not really anything that I would personally choose to listen to outside of the game. This is where Primal really lost me after a while. The gameplay for the most part consists of exploring each of the environments that you are in, solving smaller puzzles in order to progress deeper into the realm and then eventually fixing whatever is wrong there. If we take Aquis as an example, not long after arriving you meet the Queen of the Undine race who explains that the waters are being poisoned and the pumping stations are all shut down. It's up to you in that case to visit all of the pumping stations and reactivate them. It's not that straightforward though as there are strong currents that have to be navigated, enemies to be fought and other environmental puzzles to be solved. In this example you switch to Scree to get through the currents because he is made out of heavy stone and therefore unaffected by them. In each realm, Jen is granted the power to transform into the race that live there, so in the first world, Solon, you can change into one of the Fenrir, who are much stronger in hand-to-hand -hand combat thanks to their claws. In Aquis, you get the ability to turn into one of the Undine and can therefore swim underwater without drowning. These demon forms also play quite a large part in the puzzles, such as the Fenrir having the ability to jump much higher than a regular human could. The game doesn't exactly spell out the solutions for you, though none of them are beyond the average player if they are thorough enough. 
The different realms can be quite large though in that they are made up of many smaller areas, so it can be easy to miss something or simply be looking in the wrong place. This is by far the most tedious aspect of the game and the reason why I stopped playing. Combat in Primal is fairly frequent but is also quite simple. There are different attacks to the L and R buttons, and once you've done enough damage to an enemy, you can then perform a particularly violent finishing move by pressing L1 and R1 at the same time. None of the fights are all that challenging, and even if you do take some damage, you can then leech some energy directly from Scree to top up your meter. He will then charge his own meter by sucking up the life energy from fallen enemies, by crushing glowing rocks that you find scattered around the world, and from energy fountains that you will come across from time to time. Each realm ends with a boss fight, but again, these fights are not that tough if you know what you're supposed to be doing. The overall concept of Primal is quite original, although it does remind me a little bit of the Soul Reaver series. That's also the closest match gameplay-wise as well, although there is a much bigger emphasis on action in Soul Reaver. Primal is more about the puzzles. Primal is quite a short game, you can expect to be done with the whole thing in about 8 hours. The game should only cost a fiver at the most, most likely less than that, so you do get a decent sized game for the money. Now, though I personally found the gameplay of Primal to be rather tedious and plodding, I do know that there are plenty of people out there who loved it and are still hoping that Sony will make a sequel to this day. There are definitely things about it that I do like, but I couldn't bring myself to play through the last three hours or so. The Undine Realm was a lot of fun, but things really started to fall apart for me in Aether, with the drab colour palette and irritating puzzles. It's a shame, but I have come to terms with the fact that the game simply isn't for me. Perhaps it will be for you though. If you think it might be something you'd enjoy, it's not exactly a huge monetary investment to find out either way. 